back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Antoinette. And the first thing we're gonna do is just subscribe to this channel. Hit the thumbs up button because we all know it's going to be a great video, right? We're gonna talk about why you're not losing fat and how you can fix it, okay? So in today's video, I'll be telling you guys plenty of fat loss tips, a workout routine that is great for fat loss, along with what to get at the grocery store, what healthy meals you need to eat to reach your goal. So let's just get right into it. Number one, why you're not losing fat is simply because you're eating too many calories, okay? So boom. In order to lose fat to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. You have to eat less calories than what you're burning off daily. You're eating less and you're still figuring out why you're not losing fat because one, you're not consistently tracking your macros, okay? When it comes to fat loss, fat loss is not easy. You not count your macros only two days off the week and think that you're going to get results. Be consistent with it and at least track for the five days out the week consistently. And even on the days that you don't track, you still need to be making healthy choices. I know how hard it is to consistently track your macros six, seven days out the week. That's very hard and it can be unrealistic for some people. It can be a lot. So the days that you're not counting, take those two, three days off from tracking just to give yourself a break, but still make healthy choices. Of course, you can go out and enjoy yourself and eat an unhealthy meal. But make sure you're at least following the 80-20 rule where 80% of your diet throughout the week is healthy, nutritious foods and 20% of your diet, you're enjoying yourself. But other than that, you have to be consistent. Calorie in, calorie out, BS. I talk about this in a video that was quite some time ago. So we're gonna talk about it again. The calorie in, calorie out, is BS. Not all calories are the same. As long as you eat in a calorie deficit, you're gonna lose weight. That is 100% correct. But you guys need to understand that not all foods are processed the same in your body. Every single kind of food is processed differently in your body. So of course you can go ahead and eat McDonald's, eat Chick-fil-A every single day and lose weight. But those type of foods are not going to help boost your metabolism. Eating foods that will help boost your metabolism will lead to faster fat loss. When you have a faster metabolism, it's easier for you to lose fat and lose weight. But if you're eating foods that are not going to help boost your metabolism, you're going to hit a plateau. And now it's doing the opposite of what you want it to do. So it's very important that you need to have your diet filled with nutritious whole foods that are actually going to help reach your results rather than just eating anything you want as long as you're in a calorie deficit. Just remember that all foods are not processed the same in your body. Foods are processed differently. You need to be filling your body with nutritious foods in order for you to lose fat. So if you're having trouble losing fat and you know you're eating in a deficit, you need to look at your diet. You write out everything that you eat in your diet and figure out what is it that's causing me not to lose fat? What is it that's causing me not to reach my goals? Maybe you're consuming too many calorie dense foods. So healthy calorie dense foods could be avocado, nuts, and healthy oils. No, those are all perfect for your diet and I want you to keep that in your diet. But if you're not tracking your macros, it can be very hard to understand calorie dense foods has a lot of calories in it. They're very small portions that have extreme amount of calories in it. Approximately a medium avocado has 240 calories in it. A half a cup of nuts, it has approximately 430 calories in it. And as you see, that small amount, it's so easy to eat more than just half a cup. So you guys have to understand that yes, these foods are very healthy for you and I want you to eat them and keep them in your diet, but just be mindful of how much you're eating. I don't want you to get the whole bag of nuts and just chow down on it because if you consume like half the bag, Babe, that is like over a thousand, way over a thousand calories. So please be mindful of how much you're eating with these calorie dense foods. Keep them in your diet, but be mindful of how much you're eating, okay? Up next, your exercise routine needs to change. Am I saying this? Am I actually saying that your exercise routine needs to change? But you need to pause for a quick because I'm gonna explain what exactly I mean. So throughout my whole channel, I always talk about don't change your routine, don't change your routine, do not change your routine. But if you want to lose fat, obviously you subscribe to this page because you want to build fat. <laughs> obviously you subscribe to this channel because you want to lose fat and you want to build muscle, right? Why else are you on this channel for? So if your goal is to lose fat and build muscle, you need to change that routine. You're doing too much cardio and not enough weights. Yes, babe, that's you. You need to change your routine, okay? Because cardio is not going to help you lose fat. It's simply going to just help you lose weight. And losing weight, sometimes it doesn't save your body. You're not snatching the waist and hip in the hips, okay? Cardio doesn't do that. But with strength training 
or just simply weight training, building muscle helps increase your metabolism. And what happens when you increase your metabolism? You're burning more calories. And what happens when you burn more calories? You lose more fat. So weight training is one of the best ways you're looking to lose fat. You want to build muscle so that way you're not only improving your metabolism, but you're shaping your body as well and you're losing inches off your waist and hips. Don't be afraid to lift weights. Doing too much cardio without any strength training is probably the worst thing that you can do if your goal is to build muscle lose fat. But you need to, of course, keep your cardio in your routine. Not too much to the point where you're neglecting weight training. So a balance of both is perfect. On to the same topic about switching up your routine. So if you're trying to lose fat, you're doing insanity. I used to do insanity all the time. I was that insanity girl because, you know, back in the day, I just wanted to be as skinny as possible. So I did insanity every single day. Sandy or the beach body workouts are great. They are an amazing hit style workouts, high intensity interval training that is great for your body. But you're doing these workouts over and over and over and over and over again. The same 10 workouts. You're doing the same YouTube workouts over and over and over again, but you're not switching it up. Now, of course I say you need to keep the same routine in, but with those workouts, if you're not increasing the intensity in some kind of way, you're not increasing the sets, increasing the reps, decreasing your amount of reps, then your body's going to hit a plateau again. You're not going to lose fat. Or you're doing the same YouTube workouts, you have to be switching up something. And of course, when I say switch it up, I mean that you need to be aggressive overloading, which means that you need to change the reps, the sets, the amount of weight that you're using. When it comes to progressive overloading, it's not just about weight training. You can progressive load literally anything. So make sure if you're doing those workouts, you are progressive overloading in some way so that way your body is not hitting a plateau you have to challenge your body in some way <laughs> up next you're simply stressed out stress can significantly impact your mobility to maintain a healthy weight now i learned this in nursing school it's giving nurse babe it's giving nurse girl vibes but stress increases your cortisol in your body. Cortisol is a hormone in your body which regulates your stress level. So when you have high amount of stress, your cortisol increases. And when your cortisol level is high, you may notice symptoms like weight gain, fatigue, changes in your body, things like that happens when your cortisol is high. So you want your cortisol to be at a balanced level. So in order to do that, you need to improve your stress levels, which I know I can't just tell somebody, hey, you need to stop being stressed. I can give tips on how to improve your stress. Meditate, take time out of your day to meditate. Do yoga. I just started doing hot yoga and y'all I am literally obsessed with it and it definitely helps with my stress level. It just makes me relax. I'm in a hot room, I'm sweating, and I'm doing something that I enjoy. So doing things like that is going to help relieve that stress so that way your cortisol levels are not extremely high and causing you to gain weight. So make sure you're doing your best to lower your stress as much as you can. Next reason why you're not losing fat. This one goes hand in hand, but number one, you're drinking too much alcohol, you're drinking too much beer. Alcohol and beer, they have plenty of calories, very calorie dense. If you're going to drink alcohol, you need to choose the alcohol that has the less calories in it. Don't go for the margarita that has plenty of sugars or the beer that's gonna cause you to get a pop belly. Don't choose those options if you're going to drink in moderation, cause that's what we do. Make sure you're choosing the alcohol that's not such calorie dense, so that way you're still enjoying yourself, but you're not putting so many calories in your body. Now, what goes hand in hand with that? You're letting loose on the weekends too much. I said this in the video, of course you want to enjoy your life. I understand that, but if you're doing that every single weekend where you're letting loose Friday, Saturday, Sunday, might as well say goodbye to your dream body. You need to understand that you have goals in mind. And sometimes it just takes discipline. Sometimes it takes sacrifices. And sometimes you just have to say no. Or you have to pick a better alternative. Instead of getting a burger and fries, replace the fries for a salad. Just choosing healthier alternatives so that way you're still enjoying yourself, but you still understand that you have goals in mind and you have to reach those goals regardless. So make sure that you're not overdoing it on the weekends. Be mindful of how much you eat and you should be good. Up next, reason why you're not losing fat is because you're not getting enough rest. Did you know that late night eating is associated with greater weight gain? If you didn't know that, now you know. So if you are sleep deprived, it can increase your appetite and your cravings for high calorie dense food. And then the more calories you consume, the more weight you're going to gain. You need to allow your muscles to get an adequate amount of rest. So it really is important. Not just like resting throughout the day, taking rest days off the gym, but just getting enough sleep throughout the night. It'll help you lose fat. So let's say that you're having trouble going to sleep. Put your phone down, turn the TV off. Put your phone on, do not disturb. And try to go to bed at the same time every single night. And make sure that you are trying your best to get an adequate amount of sleep every single night and of course take your rest days from the gym so that way your muscles are having time to rebuild and regrow we're almost done y'all up next you are skipping 
breakfast. You're skipping meals. We're gonna talk about metabolism again, but eating breakfast, eating something first thing in the morning is going to help boost your metabolism, and we all know that's going to help you lose weight quicker. When you take a pass on that first meal of the day, it can actually work against you. You can actually start to become hungrier during lunch, and that causes you to eat more. Starting the day with a healthy, nutritious breakfast is the best way to go. That way it can regulate your hunger cues and boost your metabolism, of course, so you can lose weight faster. Now, that's all right. Well, we got one more thing. Let's say that you've been doing everything correct and you know that you're doing it correct. Because sometimes you guys say you're doing correct, but you really not. Let's say that you're doing everything correct, but you still can't find the solution of why you're not losing fat. It could simply just be a health issue, a health problem. Certain health problems can make it hard for you to lose weight. So if it comes down to it and you know you're doing everything right and you've been doing it consistently, hard work and discipline, you've got help from plenty of people, but you still having trouble losing fat, it really could just be a health issue. So this is why I put this as a last step because I want this to be the last resort. I don't want you to run to your doctor just because you didn't reach your goal in a month, no. Of course you need to be getting checked regularly, but if you see that this is a real problem, then I want you to consult with your doctor to see if it's health related. Okay, so now we are going to get into the workout routine. So I created this plan just for you guys so you guys can get an idea of what kind of exercises you need to be doing in order to reach your goals, along with how many reps to do, how many sets, and the best cardio routine to help you lose fat and build muscle. So I'm actually using this workout plan in this video from my online coaching app. So I am an online coach and I target clients that want to build muscle and lose fat. So I created this plan strictly from the online coaching app so that way you guys can get an idea of what my online coaching business looks like. Looks like. So this plan is a typical four day plan that I usually make for my clients that want to work out at least four days out of the week and they have the goal of shaping their physique while also losing inches off their waist and hips. So these are just examples. Everybody's plan is different and I create a customized and personalized plan for every client in order for them to reach their specific goals. So a priority for my clients is to build muscle in each body part. For day one, we are targeting back and biceps. The cue to every back workout is to relax your shoulders, relax your traps, make sure everything is relaxed from your upper body. And you want to pull the weight using that mind to muscle connection in order for you to really feel the muscle working in that body part that you're trying to target. Now, when it comes to any kind of bicep exercise, you want to keep your elbows tucked in by your side and keep them as stable as possible. The more stable you are, the more results that you get. So if you are swinging your arms too much, it defeats the purpose of the exercise. So make sure your elbows are tucked in by your side and you are taking your time with each rep. Now with my online coaching, I create a plan specific to my clients pertaining to their activity level and how familiar they are with the gym. So if they are someone that is a beginner and they have never did a pull up in their life, I am not going to throw that in their routine because that is not realistic for them. We start off slow, we work our way up until we get to the point where we can do challenging exercises. But for the pull ups, for example, if you are not at the level yet where you can do a full pull up with just your body weight, then we always start off with an alternative. So that could be using a pull-up machine or using a heavy band to assist you with the pull-ups until you get to the point where you're comfortable with doing a full pull-up on your own. Now we're getting into cardio for day one. So the amount of cardio I put in for my clients just depends on their activity level, what they're comfortable with, and how much fat they are trying to lose. I love to throw in sprints into their workout routine. Sprints is one of the best way to build muscle while also losing fat. Sprints help you burn more calories in just a shorter amount of time rather than doing something that is long distance. But of course, we throw that in as well so we can just switch up the routine a bit. But sprints are definitely a priority, especially if they want to lose fat and build muscle. Now, if you are a beginner, you do not have to do a 10 to 15 sprint in interval you can do whatever works for you whatever you feel most comfortable with so that's just doing three to four minutes of 20 seconds on 20 seconds off then do that you do not have to do anything that's too strenuous until you get to the point where you're feeling comfortable and confident in yourself to do a longer distance <music> Oh, 
Okay, so now we're getting into day two quads and core. Quads are one of the bigger muscles in your body, so this day is specifically just to target your quads. But we're starting off with a Smith machine squat, which is a great alternative to a barbell squat if you're not yet comfortable squatting with free weights. So this is a great alternative. It helps keep you more stable, more sturdy. And using a barbell squat can take a lot more effort, a lot more focus on your technique. So if you're a beginner, the Smith machine is the best way to go. So again, if you're not yet used to using a barbell squat, then using a pendulum squat or a hack squat will allow for deeper range of motion since you are using an assisted machine. And we all know the deeper you go, the more gains you get because all the tension is at the bottom of the rep. So going as low as you can with these machines that are assisted will give you ultimate results. Now, when it comes to choosing which kind of squat to do during your workouts, rather that's a pendulum squat, a hack squat, barbell squat, goblet squat, it doesn't really matter, okay? A squat is a squat. Some machines may offer more benefits than the other but ultimately you're squatting it doesn't matter if you're using a hack squat or a pendulum squat it's primarily the same thing if you're going to the gym and you're trying to figure out which machine to use it doesn't really matter you can always switch around use different machines but the only thing that matters is the load that you're putting on yourself the load which is how much weight you are putting on your body how much weight you are pushing that is what matters the most in order to get ultimate results you have to be pushing yourself and using weights that challenge you Now we are getting into core work. You guys need to understand how important it is to train your core. A strong core will prevent injuries and without proper support during your movements, your spine is at risk for injury. And the less stable your spine is, the higher you are at risk for hurting yourself. So it is important to train your core at least a few times a week. Have a specific day throughout the week where you're training your core. And of course, you can always target your core through your compound movements like your squat and your deadlift. If you are engaging your core correctly, you can target your core that way or you can do specific exercises like leg tucks and leg raises in order for you to target those core muscles. <music> Now the walking carries or the farmer's walk whichever you want to call it this is a great exercise not only to target your shoulders your arms but it also targets your obliques as well which helps build a strong and stabilized core so choose a space where you can walk back and forth and do a few sets with a moderate to heavy weight that's going to challenge you So now we are getting into push day. Push exercises are simply exercises that you push. So it can be the seated plate loaded chest press. You are pushing the weight. It kind of tries to exercise because you are pushing the weight down. So that's what it means when we say push day or pull day. Like for the back and biceps, you are pulling the weight. You are pulling the seated cable roll. The push pull technique is a great way to split up your workouts because you are ensuring that you are working different muscle groups while allowing the other muscle groups to give it time and rest off from the gym so that way it has time to grow and build of course if you want to focus on a specific body part more than the other then of course you can add it into your routine a little bit more often you are truly defeating the purpose if you train a body part more than twice a week so if you want to grow your chest you're doing it three times a week that is a little bit too much and there is great controversy of if i want to grow muscle i need to be doing it more often if i really want to train my glutes i need to be training it at least three times a week but with with this type of training, you're not giving your body rest. You're not giving your body time to grow because you are constantly putting it under pressure. That defeats the purpose. You need to give your body rest in order for it to grow. Your muscles do not grow in the gym. They grow at rest. They grow when you are not putting it under pressure. My rule of thumb is train a body part at least one to two times a week. Nothing more than that. That is the best way to get ultimate results while allowing your body to recover and just give it time off from the gym. So it is important to train each body part so that way you're not creating any imbalances in your body. But let's say that you don't really want to grow your shoulders too much. That doesn't mean that you ignore it completely, that you neglect it, but you still want to train them so that way you're not creating any imbalances. Training your upper body can help aid in faster progression in your lower body because when you are using your lower body, when you are training it, you're not just using your legs, you're using your core, you're using your shoulders and back to engage through the movement. So build 
building a strong upper body especially your shoulders or back will help you build more muscle and grow your lower body and of course it helps give you an hourglass figures and of course women who train upper body are sexy we are one of a kind okay don't ever neglect upper body it is so important to train each body part Now we are getting into the last cardio day of the week. So we already did our sprints. So now we are focusing on a longer distance for our cardio. So doing a 20 to 30 minute cardio session that is at least a low to moderate intensity is perfect for fat loss. Each cardio session does not have to be intense. So it is good to keep your cardio level at a low to moderate intensity while also throwing in a higher intensity for the week like the sprints that we did on back and biceps day. So when you are choosing your cardio of the week, it does not have to be anything specific you can do the treadmill elliptical stairmaster you can do a hot pilates class whatever it is that you enjoy the most so that way you're getting an adequate amount of cardio in each week while also prioritizing weight training Last but not least, we are getting into day four, hamstring and glute day. Usually for each workout, my clients always start with a compound movement that's going to take up most of their time and most of their energy. So something I typically like my clients to start off with is an RDL. I have plenty of videos explaining how to properly do an RDL. So if you guys are interested, make sure you check out my page and watch my workout so you know how to correctly do an RDL. But when it comes to choosing if you're going to use a dumbbell or a barbell to do a certain exercise it typically does not matter so if someone was a beginner in a gym i would choose a dumbbell rdo versus a barbell rdo because dumbbells are lighter they're more easier to control but when it comes to dumbbells they only go to a certain weight and once you start to progress in your workouts and you want to start implementing the barbell rdo so that way you can load on more weight to the bar without compromising your form next movement is a leg press so leg press typically targets your quads but depending on how you place your feet you can target your hamstrings and glutes as well so that's why i like to throw this on hamstring and glute day so my feet are placed at the higher end of the platform so that way i can target a little bit more hamstrings and glutes but this movement primarily targets your quads so it is going to target your quads along with your hamstrings and glutes but putting your feet at the higher end of the platform allows you to release activation on your quads and focus more on your hamstrings and glutes Another staple that I always add to my clients' workout program is the glute kickback. There are different variations to the glute kickback to target certain areas of your glutes, but this is the typical glute kickback, which targets your gluteus maximus. And this is an exercise that I post about quite frequently. So if you guys are interested in watching the other videos to learn how to correctly perform this exercise, then I will put a link to the video in the description. Up next, we have step ups on the Smith machine. We are doing it slightly different than the normal way to do a step up. As you see here, I have a stool. You can change the height of the stool depending on your physical activity and what you're comfortable with. I like to have the stool to be as high as possible so that way I'm getting more range of motion and it makes the workout more challenging as well. But you can change the height of the box or just get a smaller box so that way it's not too challenging for you. Using the Smith machine will be a better alternative than just doing it without any machines or anything that's going to help you through the exercise it helps stabilize your body and keeps you more sturdy so that way you have good form throughout the movement and last but not least we are throwing on a seated leg curl so i usually like to throw in a finisher where we're doing more reps for the last exercise of the workout just to fully exhaust your body through the movement and to maximize fat loss and muscle growth If you guys are interested in being a client of mine, if you're looking for guidance in your fitness journey, then please visit my website at antonmariafit.com and fill out an inquiry form. The form takes less than two minutes to complete. It's just a way for me to get to know you a little bit more and what your specific goals are. So please fill out an inquiry form and I will reach out to you directly to schedule a free consultation call with me. 
Last but not least, I am taking you guys to the grocery store with me so you guys have a better understanding of what foods you need in order for you to lose fat and foods that you may want to slow down or cut out of your diet. So we're going to split this into sections. We're going to start off with produce. Choosing fresh produce like fruits and vegetables versus something that is canned is the best way to go, especially since with the fresh produce, it conserves more vitamins and minerals than the canned vegetables and fruits. Canned fruits and vegetables also have a higher amount of sodium, so I do like to choose fresh vegetables and fruits over the canned foods. When it comes to protein, your meat and fish, anything that is lean, like the 93.7 lean ground turkey versus fatty beef, which has a ton of fat contained in it. Anything that is packaged like hot dogs or lunch meat, which isn't natural protein, contains an excessive amount of sodium as well. When it comes to starchy carbs, the carbs you want to keep in your diet are like sweet potatoes, brown rice, oats, and quinoa. These are great for your body and it's best to implement these type of carbs into your diet rather than any kind of packaged snacks like the apple and cinnamon instant oatmeal. It contains a lot of sugar, any kind of cereals or packaged snacks. These are not the best for fat loss. These are called refined carbohydrates. That's not the best for fat loss and muscle growth. When it comes to yogurt, I do like to choose the plain, not fat Greek yogurt. But anything with like M&M's, Oreo, and things like that in your yogurt is not the healthiest. So the best alternative is to choose a non fat Greek yogurt. When it comes to condiments, please be careful with your condiments. These have hidden calories that you're most likely going to use more than one serving. So as you see here, this ranch has 130 calories per two tablespoons. Super easy to use more than that. So I would choose a light ranch with lighter calories in it rather than the calorie dense condiments. Elements. When it comes to seasonings, using seasoning in moderation is key, but I do like to use Mrs. Dash, which is salt-free, or any kind of spices which are natural and doesn't have any sodium contained into it. But the Lori seasoned salt, that contains around 300 milligrams of sodium, and that is just one serving, and it's easy to use more than just one serving of sodium, so make sure you're choosing better alternatives when it comes to seasonings. And last but not least, when it comes to drink, drinking core water, anything that has vitamins and minerals is the best way to go. When you are drinking normal water, you are flushing out vitamins and minerals. It's okay to drink regular water, but make sure you're adding in water that has electrolyzed vitamins and minerals contained in it.